I just want to say that it's, it feels truly awesome in the proper meaning of the word to be here tonight and to have the posters looking as great as they're looking now. It's a fantastic setting and I want to thank the Nelson family and Pat Garvin for making this possible before we get anywhere. So, uh, you know what, I'd, I'd actually like to give you a big hand right now. So, 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 if you live in Africa like I do, you know, um, the question is often asked, how do you eat an elephant? Does anyone have the answer? <laughs> how do you eat an elephant? The easy answer is um, one bite at a time. But that's not always the best answer. I'll tell you what the best answer is. The best answer is, is that you need you need a hundred you need a hundred hungry animals around an elephant to bring it down. You need a lion with its strong legs and, and its big teeth <coughs> Sorry. to cut into that thick skin and get to the good stuff. You need that. And then and then you need hyenas with their organizational skills to, to bring this thing down to, to the ground, right? Now you can't do it otherwise, it's got to come down. And then of course you need vultures. Because, you know, they don't mind coming in at the last minute once everybody's done to clean up the mess. They do that all the time, that's what they do for a living. You know? And then lastly, maybe you need jackals. Jackals will come in and suck the bone marrow and... Because that's good stuff, right? That's nutritious stuff, that's delicious stuff. So they'll do that and they'll take the bone, bones away to clean up the ground, to clear up the ground. So you need all of that. You can't do big things alone. You need the help of other people who have different skills, who have different resources that you have. Okay. And that's when Mandela found himself in that position. He had to bring the elephant of his time down. And what was that elephant? That was the apartheid system. He didn't do it alone, he had friends. Oliver Tambo, Waters of Sulu, many others. Um, and they helped him bring that animal down. But they weren't alone. They had to work with the international community. People like yourselves, many of yourselves were in marches. Journalists who had to write articles, intellectual people. Freedom fighters who had to go into the bush and fight. You know, they all had to put in what they could put in to bring the system down. All right? and enter the Nelson, you know, the, the, the Mandela Poster Project. We started out as just 10 guys who wanted to do something for Mandela in the year that he was turning 95 because we had a sense that this might be his last birthday. So we got together, we said, what can we do? What can we do, guys? And we, we came up with the idea of making posters because that's what we can do. Um, initially, the idea was each person will do 10 posters. Um, and then we'll, you know, they add up to a hundred or so, we'll get 95 from that easy. You know, once you start working, you realize that, damn, I'm, <laughs> I'm creating a gift for Nelson Mandela here. This is not just another guy, you know. I can't, I can't do one poster, never mind 10. So we went into the internet, went into Facebook to get some of our friends. Each one has maybe 10 friends who can do posters to help us out. And instead of 95 posters, we ended up with 900 posters. Because on Facebook, you reach the world. You know, I have friends in Greece, I have friends in Brazil, I have friends in the US. We have friends all over the place, right? So this thing ended up being a global project that involved the whole world, which is a really fantastic thing. Because at the time, when Nelson Mandela was in his last days, um, the family was having a hard time dealing with that. The ANC, the movement that he comes from, his political home was having a hard time dealing with that. And South Africa was having an even worse time dealing with that. So the poster project became the one piece of good news, you know, you know, when Mandela was having his last days. It's something that we didn't want to see happen like that, but it's something we remain very proud of. You know, this delightful, colorful, eye candy thing that has so much meaning but also can travel so far and so fast, you know. We use the internet to get the message out there. And these sort of things live well on the internet. It would be a tragedy if Mandela would, and his story, would get buried in history books. 
and that would be the end of the story. I think Mandela needs to live, you know, for generations to come to know him and to think he's a cool dude, you know? You need young people to see Mandela as a cool dude because he had many lessons that we need to hold on to and take, to, take forward with us, you know, in, in life. So we saw the posters. We, we sold them for a hundred thousand, you know, the collection a hundred thousand dollars to the Design Institute in South Africa, which is quite apt, I think. And that money, I mean, in South African terms, it's a million rands. So, so it was quite substantial for us. Um, that money is now with the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital Trust. And it's something that was actually Nelson Mandela's last wish to see a health facility built for African children. There are only five children's hospitals in Africa, the whole continent. There's almost a billion people now in Africa. Five children's hospitals. I think, I don't know, you've got hundreds in the US. So, so, so this is a massive thing. It's a big deal for, in the world of hospitals, in the world of children's health care. It's a big deal for the Mandela Poster Project that we've made a contribution to something as important as that. You know, and I'd like to thank also uh, you for coming to add your voice to that big deal, right? So, guys, um, the, the the question that remains becomes: What is what is the elephant of our times? You know, I flew in here and I saw lots of elephants in the plane. <laughs> you know, that's an elephant right there. I. I walked down New York streets, I saw elephants all over the place, <laughs> you know. I switched on the TV set, I saw elephants, newspapers, I saw elephants, you know. What do we need to bring down, you know, to leave a legacy for our children? But probably more importantly, what are we going to build in its place? That is a question that I think we all need to ask ourselves, and that is a question that I certainly ask myself all the time. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions about the posters, I'm very happy to answer. Um, we're here for a few hours still. So thank you for coming, and thank you to the Nelson. <laughs> uh, Tati explained, this is the poster that he did, and I'm going to have him explain it to you because it's really touching when you see it, and, and he'll, it, it's better when you see it in person, but he can go through it. So, would you explain your inspiration and everything here? Absolutely. I'm very happy to do so. So, <clears throat> the story of Nelson Mandela is quite easy because it's a, it's a linear story. I mean, you can complicate it, but if you tell it from the beginning and you finish it at the end, it's very easy to tell. And these two images pretty much represent that. This is Nelson Mandela at 19. You know, he just finished high school, went on to university. And what's weird about Mandela is that uh, if you take him from the part of the South Africa where, where, he, where he was brought up, he was in the Transkei. And he had to cross the river to go to university. So he always needed to cross the river. He went to university, he had to cross the river to go to Johannesburg and, 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 and start, get a job, start making a living, you know? He went from there and he went into prison, Robben Island. He had to cross a big river called the Atlantic Ocean to go and do that. And to come out of that, he had to cross another big river, the same river, you know. You know. And ultimately, in the end, he just crossed the ultimate river, right? But, but this man kept having to do that. And this is the story of that life. As a 19-year-old, as a man who gets to Johannesburg, very proud of his tradition, when everybody else is dressed in a suit at a party, comes in in traditional gear. Mandela would do that, very provocative. He was a boxer. He's a tough guy, and, and, and I, 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 I do business with his family, and, and they keep having to remind me, because everybody thinks, oh, what a saint, what a gentle man, what a gentle soul. And they keep having to say, this man was not a saint, and he, he said that himself. He's, he's a tough guy who would not take any nonsense that was given. He had to fight, and he, he, he was determined to fight for, for his convictions, and that's how he ended up being who he is, because he was the tough guy that he was, and he was a boxer. 
Ian Mandela, Ian Muhammad Ali made a great connection when Muhammad Ali was in South Africa, actually. I think they both inspired each other. Um, he became a lawyer, a highly successful lawyer at a time when that was difficult for black people in South Africa. And the next picture is for him uh, during the trial, you know, when he was ultimately sent to jail for 27 years. Uh, the, last, the next one is Mandela in prison on Robben Island. Very, oh, he had attitude, he was an old man, but if you get closer, you get a chance to, to see the, the poster close up. Uh, he's got a lot of attitude in him. He, he always had that, he had style, but he, he always had attitude as well. Uh, the next one is him walking out of prison with his fist raised into the air. I think we all know that picture. And uh, the next one is him being inaugurated to become the first black president of South Africa or the first president of a democratic South Africa. And the last one is the Mandela that we, in the end, all came to know and love so much, Tata, Madiba. Um, and that's it, really. That's a simple story told from the beginning to the end. Thank you, Tony. Are there any, any other questions that, that I need to answer now? or anyone needs to answer right now. Otherwise, we're happy to answer questions as we you know, enjoy the posters. Uh, Bibi, by the way, he's, he's, yeah, Bibi, Bibi is one of the artists. Uh, his poster is, Bibi, which one is it? That one right there. I stand right next to it. Uh, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Great job, Dr. Uh,